Hi, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day. Running a little behind today, so I apologize for that. Let me get rid of this banner. There we go. So, I know it seems like it's been a while, and it has. But I've got another project here for you today. I'm sorry about the little bit of a glare we're having here with the, the, the dome, but I love this project. This project is, hello, Amy. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Marguerite. Nice to see you guys, or nice to know that you're on the other end of the camera. Uh, so, I, again, I know it's a long weekend for you guys, so I hope everybody has a happy, safe, enjoyable long weekend, and, and hopefully maybe you get some crafting done if that's on the cards, in the cards. So, yeah. So just wait a second or two, and then we'll... Hello, Krista. And we'll uh, just see where this takes us today. I'm going to do this in two parts. So part one today is going to be, we're going to do the cover, the hinges, and we're going to put the base pages onto those hinges. And the reason I'm breaking up it, it up into two parts is then it's not, it's not a long, long tutorial, you know, and we have something to look forward to next weekend or, or next Friday. Okay. All right. I'm even, I'm even managed to get on to, hello, Brenda onto my YouTube channel so that, you know, you, you get to see what's going on in both places. For some reason, it feels like it's not straight, but I know it is. Let's move this back a little more. So this is probably the cleanest this desk has been in, in, uh, in a couple of days. So where do I want to start about this project? I think I'm going to start by showing you what I used to create it. And then I'll give you the walkthrough and then we'll start. How does that sound? But isn't it gorgeous? I absolutely love this. This is this is gonna be right up there with uh, my, how can I say it, top 10 albums I've made that I've fallen in love with. And I don't know if it's because it's purple and believe it or not, as much as I call myself a blue person, I love the color purple. I just don't ever wear it or I wear it very rarely. But this project came together so easy. So let me set it aside. Let me set our cutting guide aside. And let me bring over, because see, this way it gives you time to get some of these bits and pieces. Hello, RJ. Thank you so much. I love it. You know what? But I never think of purple like that. I love purple. Purple is just a color that, or uh, maybe that's what it is. Like lavender, yeah, is a washed out version of purple. But like I say, I, we've got lilacs all down our driveway. And when they bloom in the spring, I love every second of them blooming. So let me step over to get what I need to get. And then we'll talk about all these bits and bobs. So look at this, I'm just slapping down on my table all this stuff, so I'm gonna move some of it aside, just so I, I've gotta to remember to talk about all of this. So let's put that over there. So of course, I don't have the collection anymore to show you. And since I very rarely get around to doing hauls, as I call, as they're called, mainly because, um, Sometimes when I get my stuff, I don't really know what I'm going to use for design team and what's going to sort of be my personal stash. And sometimes those, those lines get blurred. So I picked up Lavender Farm when I was in Utah back at the end of April, beginning of May. I can't believe it was that long ago now. And then some things happened. We had a retreat. So that put me behind getting to get, get started on this. And then I got sick and now I'm better. And now I get to share this beautiful collection with you guys. Hello, Danielle. So it's the Lavender Farm by Minte Papers. And if you've never used any of the Minte Papers lines, please at least give one collection a try. 
you will be amazed what you can do with it. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get into the walkthrough. And hopefully I don't talk so much today that I have to say to you guys, hello, Miss Teresa Elliott. I have to say to you guys, we're going to have to come back and do the actual project, but I don't think that's going to happen. So this is the paper line. This is the collection. So it comes with six 12 by 12 sheets and they're double sided, of course, and they give you two of each sheet, which I love. And then if, if that's not enough, so this is the cover page on the back of the cover page. You get all of these beautiful cut aparts that you can cut out. And the only reason I didn't use any of these in my book is I wanted to be able to at least show you the collection. So I probably have enough stuff left over here that I think what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to make some just because cards or just, you know, here's a note kind of card. And I'm going to do some fussy cutting and get these cut out and use them on that project but a lot of these die cuts are in the where is it in the die, paper die cuts that they they also sell so if you're not a fussy cutter this i would highly recommend and even if you are a fussy cutter get this too because you'll see how i use them and how amazing they are but just keep in mind that you actually get twice. If you get this, the, the, the paper die cuts, and you get the uh, 12 by 12, you will get lots of cutouts. Hello, Orla. So I had that. I had the die cuts. I also got the 6 by 6 paper pad. And look what they do on it. Both the front cover and the back cover, they give you more cutouts that you can cut out. And these cutouts are stunning. I'm going to just bring it up a little bit. They are stunning. And this is thick. Like the cover is a thick cardstock, so it's not flimsy. And then I got the chipboard or the cardboard stickers. And I've used some of them. And like I say, I plan to use. Um, more of them when I do these cards I'm thinking of because a lot of these words I thought would have been perfect on cards. I I, I kind of shied away from them in the project. I should have used this, but I wanted that dome on the front. Um, but they're gorgeous too. And what I did with them, so they're they're not as thick as let's say an Echo Park chipboard piece, but they are like lightweight chipboard weight. But what I did is when I pulled out one of these, I actually took my finger and I peeled off the sticky back. And the reason I did that, so there's the sticky back, and it's still plenty thick. The reason I did that is I wanted to make sure when I was laying down my chipboard pieces or my cardboard stickers, as these are called, that I could take my picture, you know, on a page and, sorry, I got everything coming out here at me. Hang on a second, need two hands. And everything fell on the floor too. You know, you know how it goes. Once, once you have one disaster, you've got multiples. So that when you lay like the, the cardboard sticker down, you you just glue the top of it right and then you can slide your photo underneath it so i'll show you more of that when i get into the other part so that is all of the collection hello nancy which is stunning and i loved every second of working with it and it might have been the turquoise color too because it's it's that lavender purple color and then there is a i'm going to call it a turquoise in there too which is what I'm referring to is is this color here I don't think that's teal I don't think so I'm sure maybe it is maybe turquoise is the wrong word maybe teal is the right word for it but it's gorgeous hello Judy now I also in that project Tammy sells these shaker domes in the store they come as a pack of four 
They're three and a half by three and a half. So there's the actual dome. And it has an adhesive around the outside of it. And my trick on these is I'm going to try. I wonder if I do this, if you'll no, not on. Let's do it on the purple. Maybe we'll see it on the purple. Uh, we can see it somewhat. So see right here. This is the adhesive. And the actual dome comes out about an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch past that. All I do when I'm going to use these domes is I take my scissors and I cut around the dome right up against that adhesive. And what does that do? That means you've got less area to hide. And really, you don't need this. And like I said, just cut along the side of the adhesive to carry out that project. And I just think it gives you a cleaner look. So that's one of my tricks for today. So I'm going to put that over there. And then the other thing I used in this project, and I probably used about half of these crystals. And these are the Buttons Galore and More CRZ106 Grape Crystals. And Tammy sells those in the shop too. I will try to remember to... Um, once, once this, is it Aqua RJ? Thank you. Once this um, video uploads to my YouTube channel, I will make sure to go in or try to remember to make sure to go in and I will um, list all of these items that I use for this project. Okay. So I talked about the domes. I talked about the crystals. Oh, ink. I use the archival ink violet to ink my edges with for this project. And it's a perfect match. It looks stunning. It's it's a perfect match for the paper. So that is the ink I used for this project. So that is that. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the purple cardstock I used. So when I was in Utah, I didn't think to go into the my colors and go, okay what my colors do I want to use for this project? So this is just a piece of purple out of my stash. And on the blue, it's looking almost washed out. So let's throw a piece of black under it for a second. There we go. That makes it look better. And it's still a little washed out. So I kind of went through the my colors and the two bit I thought would work nicely with it or work close. The plum, as far as I'm concerned, is probably the closest. But I also believed you could go with the grapevine. So one of these two my colors, grapevine, like I say, one of these two would work. And the darker one is grapevine. So this one here is the grapevine, and this one here is the plum. Okay, so that's that's where I think I would have went if I would have remembered to get some of my colors while I was down there. And I'm going to try and remember to do that when I go in June, is pick up a few different of the my colors. So I have them on hand because, as you guys know, I live in Canada. And to just go and say, hey, can you ship me a few sheets of my color? Just doesn't work like that because it takes a little longer for things to get to me. Okay. And, of course, you need things like scissors. And we don't need this coming on, of course. And you need your bone folder. And you need your stylus and so your picky tool. Those are the things that I used, my standard tools that I'm going to leave laying over here to the side. So that is that part of it. So now let's get to the goodness. Let's get to what you came here today for. This is what I created. Oh, and the other thing I should tell you guys. Where did I put it? I had it. Yeah, picked it up. Is I did do a cutting guide and I did upload it this morning over on Country Craft Creations. So go and look for the cutting guide. I will try to remember to put it into my guide, which I believe is guide 19. It's not 19, it's 18. So that it's a little easier for you guys to find too. 
So this is our cutting guide and this is what I'm going to be working with. So I kind of got to leave it someplace where I can see it, but we're not, we're not quite there yet. Oh, I am chatty today. So measurements. This little album is a seven by five and a half with a two and a half inch spine. And it's full of lots of goodness. There are, there are four pages. So it is a beautiful album. And like I say, there's a shaker element on the front of it. This is a die I had in my stash. And go and look at your circle dies and just lay them out and see if you've got one that would fit. Because then you cover up the edge. And that's a shout out to Tanya, Tanya Hart. Um, she was doing a project and she did this where she put a piece of cardstock and that's what she did is she looked through her circle dies and found one that um, was going to work and I think it just finished it off so nicely and I just love that particular die but it's from my stash and it's not in Tammy's store so I can't share the name that's okay um so what else do I want to tell you about the front so this is a six by six cut apart that I cut down. Of course, the dome. And these are from the actual die cuts. And I used a little bit of natural twine. And then I had this butterfly in my stash. And I went, that is perfect. That is the perfect element to finish off that corner. So that's what I created. Now, to give my die cuts a little bit more height, because I wanted them up a little bit more because of the dome. What I did is I took some lightweight chipboard, some scraps. Thank you, Wendy. And, Hi, Kim. And I cut them down into little squares, just like foam dots, only I use these chipboard pieces. And I believe I used three thicknesses of this lightweight chipboard to give me some height on those two pieces. And then of course I just inked everything with that violet. So that's the front. And then of course the side, the spine is really just plain and simple. Um, this is just some from the die cuts. This is from a, a border die I had in my stash or a border punch I have in my stash. So I use that. And then of course my back is pretty plain as usual. I'll put my little handmade by Bonnie on it. And what else do I wanna tell you? Oh, I used white artisan as my base paper. And I love that. I think it just makes the rest of it um, pop a little bit more. So and I see I've got one, one, there we go. I had I had one little crystal that was on its side and it was, was bugging me. So I had to fix that. So, okay, let's open it up and see what we got. So the front inside cover and the back inside cover are exact mirrors of each other, just different paper. And what I did is I made this tiny pocket and then I had these two cut apart. So this is three by four. So this mat is three and a half by three and a half. And then I uh, did a three and three eighths by four and three eighths of the purple and then matted the um, cut apart because there's a whole sheet of these. So it just slides right in. And then on the front, I use this border die quite a bit in this project because I, I just thought it helped break up some of the, the paper because the paper is a very busy paper. There's a lot going on in it, but you have to look at this paper in sections. You can't just look at the 12 by 12 and see it as a whole. You've got to try and look at those 12 by 12s and go, hey, I could take a piece of this paper and create a beautiful um project or a beautiful page with just a piece of the paper and i think that is the most important thing i can say about minte paper is don't look at it as if it is a whole piece of paper and I'm, I'm, as i'm talking to you i want to get out of 12 one of the the only 12 by 12 i've got left it's like a whole so when I'm looking at this piece of paper, I'm trying to decide when my album is, you know, less than six inches wide. 
No, I Wendy, I only got one collection pack. So one 12 by 12 collection pack and then a six by six paper pad to go with that. And that's all I used plus some of the solid, you know, purple that I had in my stash. So like in this particular piece, I would probably say I want to somehow incorporate this side of my paper and maybe use this other side for something else along the way or cut out this here at the top and somehow use it instead of looking at the whole thing and going, well, I can't use that in, in a, you know, a six by six album or a six by seven album or a five and a half by seven like this one is. That's how you have to look at some of these collections is figure out in your head. How can I make it work? And then a lot of the back, the B sides were like a plane like this, or there was the painted, uh, no, this isn't it. Um, there was a plain aqua page and a plain purple that I'll show you as we go on. See, this would be perfect for a card. I would take that much of this and use it in a card. So get ready, you're gonna see that. All right, get back to where we are. So I made an angle pocket and inside the angle pocket, there's a, a book and the all the measurements are in the cutting guide, okay? So I'm gonna stop doing measurements because that'll just take up too much of our time. And then it flips up and this is where I use the die cuts. And again, like I said, I strategically didn't glue them down all the way. This is gonna to be too big, but you can cut down your four by six just a little bit and it's going to fit quite nicely. And then the same here, you know, just cut down your four by six just a little bit. So that's the front of page one. And the other thing I should tell you is I also used four magnets in this project. So on the back of each page, that's where I used my magnets. I like to make sure I have at least a page in between magnets. So this opens like so. And there's where I use that solid paper. This opens this way. And again, you could tuck a picture in behind. And then it opens up again. And then this slides out from underneath the belly band. And then it looks like a real book. So this is the, the um, six by six. But notice how I strategically cut it down just to use the piece I wanted to use. And then this is off of another of the six by six. And it almost, when you open it up, you'd almost believe that it came off of the same six by six paper, but it didn't. But it's so close. Anyway, and the only reason I did the front and the back of this one is because when you slide it under the belly band and you close everything up, this sits like that. So let's just keep rolling here. And this is a six by six I cut down. And I thought that one I thought I could work with, the enjoy the view. It just seemed to be perfect for this project. So let's, I'm just gonna put this back in here so I don't lose it. And then on the front of page two, it's just a big pocket. And again, another little booklet. I did not do the back of this one because it's adding bulk when you do both sides, right? So I had to make decisions where I was gonna bulk things up. I didn't leave this lifted, but you certainly could if you want to put a, you know, a two by three picture there. And then here is the back of page two. And on this one, again, I glued the, the cut apart down, used my border punch again. And it almost is a perfect match. If I would have been thinking a little bit more as I was doing this part of it yesterday, I, I could have made this all work. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, it works well too. So another, this is a, from the chipboard pieces. So I did, or, stickers so it doesn't have any sticky on the back of it so you can get it something under this actually is from a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and i strategically chose what i wanted out of it and that's where i made my cuts and then it opens and it opens hope you can see all of that and again you can put you know your photo mat in behind 
you might have to cut a little of the top of it off. So it closes and it closes and then there's a magnet that holds everything shut. Now on the front of page three, I have these two cutter parts. So room for pictures of journaling on the back of them. And then it opens and it opens. And what that reveals is you've got some four by six cut parts or these are not cut aparts. These are actually three by four cut aparts. But again, I just chose. So if you look at it, you can see this is mirror, like this is the same piece of paper. But I just used them as um, the front of my photo mats. And I think they turned out, I, I love doing this with um, cut aparts. So, and they sit in the pocket. And then what is holding this pocket closed is these two three by fours. So then we turn and now I'm to the back of page three and there's another magnet involved and there's a pocket here. So again, you'll recognize this. This is the six by six. Of, I really like this page. So I ended up using it a couple of times. It's the six by six of this page. So much smaller version, of course. So this goes in the pocket and again, it's a booklet that flips up this time. And I did round all my corners and then, and the border die or border punch, I, it flips down. So there's a magnet holding this shut. Hello, Cheryl. Thank you, Tammy. That, you know, this paper was just screaming at me. And I was saying to Tammy the other day, I felt like I was a little bit of a funk. I'd gotten sick and, you know, you feel sorry for yourself when you're sick. And I just had sort of lost a little bit of my creative mojo or whatever we want to call it. And I started on this project on, I think I started on it on Tuesday. And for me to have it finished by Thursday night is un unheard of because I'm always hemming and hawing about the die cuts and all this stuff or where I put my ephemera and this, it just all, it just, it just came together so well. And again, like I said about all the others, you got your tuck spots. So always think about that when you're when you're when you're putting your ephemera in, and maybe you're going to give it as a gift. Wait, don't glue it all down. Leave them a space so that they can tuck the picture in underneath it. Because wouldn't that look beautiful? I should actually have a picture instead of these white things that I use. So this closes back up. And then, of course, our booklet goes in this little top loading pocket. And we're on the front of page four. And it's it's a set of stacked pockets. So in the bottom pocket, we've got, again, cut of three by four cut aparts. And I, I left this hanging over the top because I just felt that's what it needed to do. And then, of course, another booklet. And this is from the six by six. And this is like two by three cut aparts, or they're probably not two by three. They're probably, uh, they're like one and a half by probably, yeah, by two. And I often do this with this kind of paper. It's a way to get a booklet and you really don't need to add anything else to it. So then it slides in. And then on the back of page four, it's our last magnet. So this is again one of those cut aparts, but this time, because of where I was putting it, I just did an eighth of an inch for my, because um, I double matted these, I just did an eighth of an inch. So this is a three by four, so three and an eight, and then the, the purple is three and a quarter. And then it opens, and it opens. And this is, this is a 12 by 12, and I strategically again took it and cut it to use the piece I wanted to use. It actually, if I go back to the front for just a second, it's it's this part of the front, if I recall correctly. And this is the other side of that um, uh, circle piece that now is cut up into multiple pieces. So you can just kind of see, and there's the balance of it on here. So there's that. And then again, like I say, I really wanted the paper to be my showcase. 
So that is why I just put these little pockets on the front and back cover. I almost wasn't going to do anything. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should. And this is what I came up with. And I loved it. So that is what I created. And we talked an awfully long time. I talked on. Oh, no, I didn't start until didn't start until 1.30 today. So I'm good. Um, so that's what we're going to make. And like I said today, we're just going to make the cover. We're going to make the hinges. And we are going to make the base pages that are going on the hinges. So let me move this black piece of paper. And so I don't know how many of you are thinking you're going to work. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Tanya. I love it too. It's 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 definitely one of one of the many projects that I've done over the years that is screaming at me that it's saying, I love it. I love it. I love the paper and I love what I came up with. So I'm just going to set the book down there. I'm going to bring my um guide over a little closer and I've done some pre-work so this is the spine so the chipboard I cut for the spine is a piece that measures two and a half thank you Miss Teresa that means so much thank you by seven so that's our spine and then the front and back covers are five and a half by seven and oh I should show you one other thing I did with this so with this particular book, oftentimes I will do my um, covers that they come out a little bit more. But for this particular project, I, I wanted it to be compact. I was really focusing on that I didn't want, I didn't want my, my width of my pages to be any more than six. So this is where five and a half came from. And I love how it turned out. Oh, and I should tell you, too, that I did not um, seal the top of my base pages. So you could, I'm just going to use my bone folder, put a, um, a page in there, and that would give you more photo real estate. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. Thank you, Marguerite. I love it, too. So let's get started. We're going to start with the spine. I gave you the chipboard measurements. Now the cardstock measurements for the spine piece are five and a half by nine because remember we want a one inch at the top and a one inch at the bottom and we need our wings and I learned this little trick from Tammy and it is you take the width of your spine so my spine is two and a half inches and you add three inches to it because that gives you your wings so a one and a half wing on either side. So that's how we ended up at five and a half. So I'm just going to lay this up in the corner. I'm going to get out two of my spacers. And remember, if this is your first time kind of watching one of my lives, uh, you can get these spacers without um, the decoration on them at countrycraftcreations.com. I will do my best to remember to link them in the description of the video. And while I'm doing that, if you have not already, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is All Things Paper by Bonnie. Or you have not, um, yeah, please go and subscribe. It just helps. Thank you, Vanessa. We'll see you later. You're going to love it, Vanessa. Okay, so I've already laid down my adhesive. And I prefer to use dry adhesive for, for my chipboard pieces. Some people use the liquid glue. Again, it's a choice and it's okay because you do what makes you your heart sing. And so I just lay down that chipboard piece that it's right up against my spacers. This is my one and a half and that was my one. I always forget to mention those things because I, I use them all the time. And then I go, oh, I should mention the size of them. I'm going to put those away for right now. And then, of course, I'm going to fold over. And, yes, I am using craft for this project. Because I don't know what, what paper I'm actually going to use to decorate this one. So some of the designers were having a conversation a couple of days ago about, do you make a prototype when, you, when you're designing a project? Well, I don't make a prototype when I'm designing a project, but because I prefer to do 
uh, my tutorials live, I always end up with two of the same style. So I always have to come up with, well, what am I going to decorate my second one with? And I am going to have to go and get the paper. It's just around the other side of my computer. It was a crazy busy day in this house and I um, didn't get it out. So I'm going to apologize for that as I have to walk around. But as I was coming home from town, I had this great big epiphany and went, that's what you're going to use for the second version of this. Okay. And another shout out, it was Anne Marie that I saw do this. So she takes her bone fold and she rubs it, runs it right along the edge of the chipboard on the good side of the spine. So already telling this paper, okay, you're going to bend a little bit. We're going to be putting a wrapped this one's not wrapped yet, but a wrapped piece of chipboard here. Okay, so I, I folded over all my edges. And remember, I did say I was using Artisan, so I know I can be that rough with it. So we are going to cut out the rectangles. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting right on that fold line, and I'm going up to where those two fold lines intersect. Intersected? I guess that's how I'd say it. So it's where this fold line and this fold line meet. This, I refer to that as the X, the middle of the X. So we're going to do this other side. So we're going to repeat this on all four corners. So we had a long weekend last weekend. This is not a long weekend for us here in Canada. Our long weekend happened to be last weekend. So anybody got big plans or is it just going to be a, uh, I plan to craft all weekend long. I wish I could do that, but I got some other commitments I have to take care of. Like walk my dog that's not been walked as much as she should be walked. Hello, Katie. Glad you could join us. Okay, there we go. So that's what you're left with after you cut out your four rectangles. And now we wanna do some mitering. Now I only miter my one inch tab at the top of the spine and my one inch tab at the bottom of the spine to start with. So we're going to miter these. And then we're going to, so all I do is I take my scissors, press them right up against the edge of the chipboard, and then I just pivot them a little bit and cut into just the cardstock. You don't want to cut into that chipboard. All right, so this is what you're left with. So I'm going to get my glue, and we're going to find out if my glue is going to work because I just realized that I left it in its stand all night. So I might have to. I think it's going to be fine. Got this. I got this new little stand here at a, a, a brick and mortar store that's close by, and I love it because my glue actually stands in it. And I put a little dauber in here, a finger dauber for hot glue. It was a, a friend of mine that suggested that, and I don't end up with a great big glue mess everywhere. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to put our glue right along the edge of the chipboard. Do both sides at the same time. I don't know why I decided to do that. Around the outer edges. Don't know why I did that. Oh well. Oh Cheryl, good for you. Excellent, Debbie. Crafting is a good thing to do on a long weekend. If it, the weather stays the way it's um, shaping up right now, here where I live, I think it's going to be an indoor kind of crafting event when i was in our local town we had a thunderburst i guess is what they call they call them it it rained oh my gosh it was just crazy rain the, the system couldn't keep up with it the roads were flooding it was not very good and i get home so i live 20 minutes from the closest town and i get home and we haven't had any rain here and we so need rain. 
because any of you that know me know that I live in a part of um, British Columbia. It gets pretty hot in the summertime. And we have had really, last year we had really bad forest fires. So I really don't want a repeat of that because it's pretty scary. So here's what we've got. And so again, I'm going to tell my paper, this is how you're going to be laying in a few minutes. So let's get this in our head. Okay. And then I'm going to take some wider dry adhesive because that is my adhesive of, cho of choice. Yes, there was actually some thunder and lightning with this one. So I usually put my um, dry adhesive about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch away from my fold line. And I'm going to do two of this wider one. So this is about half inch score tape. And use whatever you've got. I know some people do this all with the liquid glue. I don't have that much success doing it that way. I create a hot mess. So this is why I like to use, sometimes lose my little ruler. My little three and a half inch Tim Holt ruler, Tim Holtz ruler is, is becoming quite a, um, an item. I was at a crop a few weeks ago and uh, one of the ladies that w watches me on YouTube, she says, there's, there's, there's your little, little Tim Holtz ruler in person. I said, yes. Hello, Zella. How are you today? I am so glad, Zella. So go back and there's a first part where I'm telling you about everything you need to purchase to do this project. So kind of fast forward or watch all of that so you know what you need. And then I did the walkthrough. I kind of did it backwards this time and, oh well, that's what I did. All right, so let's burnish these. So that's a quarter of an inch. Um, score tape is what I used there. So let's burnish all of this score tape. And I always do my spine piece first and that gives this glue time to dry. Just, I don't know why. I don't know if somebody taught me that or I watched it and saw somebody do that um, or if it's something I just decided I was going to do. So we're going to miter and this is why I always wait and I don't miter these wings right away is I want to have that side to side coverage with the score tape. that out of the way. So here's what you're left with is our piece that is folded and just have to look at something here because it looked off. No, it's fine. Um, so this is our spine done. So I'm going to put it to one side and then we're going to work on the front and back cover. So again, the chipboard pieces are five and a half by seven. You needed two of those. And then the card stock that we're going to use for this, it measures seven and a half by nine. And that gives us our one inch fold over all the way around the cardstock. So again, I'm going to push it into the top left hand corner. So we're going to do this twice. As a friend of mine says, a walk, rinse and repeat. And I'm going to use my one inch spacers. So, and then I'm going to get my picky tool out here. And again, I use the dry adhesive because I like the uh, full coverage. And push it up to the spacer and down. And put these to the side. And with my burnishing tool, my big one, burnish well. All right, so we're going to fold. Burnish those fold lines. 
and I on, on the, the, the front and back cover I only worry about folding the paper one way it's not like on the spine piece where you want those wings to know they're going to go in two different directions hello Anne glad you could join us and again so we're folding all four sides and like I say if you're not using artisan um, be careful with how hard you fold it. Um, practice before you just go as aggressively as I'm going with the Artisan. I know in the beginning when I first started using Artisan, I couldn't believe that I could be this rough on it. But uh, for the most part, I get very few cracks. And we're gonna cut out our little square corners. And again, we're just going up to that X in those fold lines. So where those two lines intersect are about a sixteenth of an inch. So if you see the tip of my scissors and the corner of the chipboard, it's about a sixteenth of an inch away from the chipboard. And I can't believe, so I'm, we're going to finish this next Friday. So next Friday, I don't, I'll post the time once I get a little closer to Friday. So I know what my schedule, how, how next Friday is going to look for me. But it'll either be at 1 or 1.30. And remember, it's recorded. And you can always go back and watch it later. I love it when you can join me, though. You know. So this is what you end up with. And again, we want to miter these one inch tabs. So we're going to miter all the tabs. And so of course, when I'm mitering, I flip it around a lot. So for this side, I have the good side facing up. But when I get over to the other side, then I've got, it's the inside facing up, the bad side. It just depends on which, which corner I'm mitering. And so now I'm back to, it's the good side of my cover, but on the other side, of course, it's not because it's it, it's exactly the same process as we were doing with the spine. You lay your scissors right up against the chipboard, and then you just pivot them a little bit. And I only know that of this way to do it. And the more you make these covers, the easier they get. This is the lay flat cover technique that uh, Tammy came up with a couple of years ago. And I would never go back to making my covers the other way. I love this method. To me, it's clean, it's neat, it's 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 everything that used to bug me about the, the, the other method where you have a long series of uh, cardstock and then you put your chipboard with the spacers in between. I um, I love this method. So the other thing I always do is I usually glue the top and the bottom one inch tabs down first. And again, that is a preference. So if you're looking at it, this is the top and the bottom. So these are the one inch tabs I'm gluing down first. And like I say, it's just what I do. I no, there's a zillion other ways to watch it, to do it. Um, so do the way you like to do these things. This is just my suggestion or my idea. Hello, Pat. There. Fold. So there's the top and the bottom, and then turn. Hello, Maria. I think it's time for me to clean out the inside of my little uh, glue finger. But I'm pretty impressed. 
because like I say, I forgot to put the pin in my glue last night. I had left it in its little holder with this little finger um, hot glue daub dauber on the bottom of it. And, uh, and I should give a shout out. That was a friend of mine from um, this croc I went to. Some of you actually might know her now from the retreat, the other Bonnie, as I call her. And it was her idea to do that. And I went, what a great idea. I might never have to search for my pin again. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Not having to search for your uh, art glue pin. Okay, so there's one of the covers finished. And we're moving right along here. We've got the spine and the front cover. Now remember, I had everything cut out ahead of time. But um, to have it, you know, we're 20 minutes into the actual tutorial. I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right, number two. Okay. So we'll see how far we get. I think we should be able to get the base pages on. The hinges. Just not sure, but I'm pretty sure we'll get that far. Okay, so let's give this a good furnish. And fold, just like we did with the first one. And I usually use my hand first to fold these two, the two one inch tabs. And I just find it's just a little easier to convince the paper to, you know, we want you to fold and then go in with my burnishing tool and give it a good burnish. That's my one of my other tricks for the day or another tip. Okay, and now we're going to cut out those four squares. So again, I work from the back side or the raw side. Or the unfinished side. Cut out along those fold lines. Oh, that's a perfect one. When they fall out on their own, I'm always happy. So I'm just trying to get this in the right light. I know it's hard for you guys to see. So the line is right there. I'm just going to cut up to the square, turn, and cut up so that they fall out just like that. So I'm just gonna take a pencil for a second. So there's the intersect point of where these two fold lines meet. So when I cut, I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm gonna cut up to that dot. And you know what? If that dot helps you to see where they meet better, Put a little pencil dot. Nobody's ever going to see it. That actually is a really good tip I just came up with there. So if you're struggling and you can't see where the two lines cross over each other, put a little pencil dot on the top of it. I do come up with some good ideas every once in a while. All right, so now we've got to miter all of this. So we want to miter all of those one inch tabs. And we're going to keep going. Yeah. Sometimes I forget and I kind of have to look to see where I'm at. got this one still to do. I knew there was one left. And the last one. 
All right, so that's that part of it taken care of. Push all that out of the way. So again, this is the top. This is the bottom of our front cover or back cover, whichever cover it is. I'm going to turn it sideways now. Run of art glitter glue or the dry clear glue along the edge of the chipboard. And the reason we do that is that lets that craft cardstock know, all right, she's going to want to fold me. Just softens the fibers because remember, paper is just another fiber. As Tammy would say, it's just a fiber. And we can make it do all kinds of things. And it's true. Once you think of it like that, I don't know why that stuck with me. But you know, it's 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 those little tips that we, we learn along our journey that sort of just stay with us forever. And you can almost hear the person saying it to you. I remember being at a retreat and uh, I had, had a little crack in the paper and the instructor, of course, I was new then, maybe only been crafting or making albums for, I don't know, a year or so. And the uh, teacher or the instructor, of course, I'm all worried about this crack in my uh, cardstock. And she walks over to me and she says, just put a little art glitter glue on your finger and rub it over it. It'll be just fine. And every, not that it happens very often, but whenever I need to do that, I always think of those words. It'll be just fine. Yep. Okay, so sometimes this happens, because I know you guys are going to have a hard time seeing that. But there is a little, I wonder if I put a baby wipe. There's a little burr right here, a little point. And I want to get rid of that because those are the things that bug me. So I just lay my scissors flat and give a little haircut. And that gets rid of the burr. Don't know why those bug me, but that is a pet peeve of mine when I'm making a cover because I don't like don't like burrs. Okay. Last side. Look at that. We've got the front back cover and we're only like a half hour into the actual teach time. So I have to make a note. Hopefully I'll remember to. Okay, so there's the one cover, there's two covers, and there's our spine. We just move all this out of the way for a second because we're gonna build the build the actual book. Hello, Jerry. So nice you could join us. So I'm taking my spine piece and I'm going to put it in my scoreboard and I'm putting it over on the left hand side, butting it right up against the edge of the scoreboard. And then I'm gonna take one of my covers and I'm gonna do a little dry fit. And how I like to do it is I like to just run it across the top of the spine and then fold it down, like let it fall down into this little groove that we've made. Remember, we uh, burnished our uh, cardstock right up against the chipboard. And so then when I take my piece of chipboard, covered chipboard, and lay it down, just slide it along. And you can hear it. You can hear it falling down. And I'm making sure that it's nice and, and square and straight, whether I didn't cut something too big or too small, because I have done that in the past. Oh, good, Mar Marguerite. I have to remember that. Yes, those are a pet peeve of mine. I don't like little burrs. They drive me crazy. All right, so now we're going to get to business. So I'm just going to take it. I've got it lifted up a bit. And as soon as I hear it flop down, and that's what I always want. I want it to be nice and flush. So I want the cover to be flush with my spine. And that, I believe, 
I don't remember who taught me that. Somebody's video I was watching. I think, I think that might have been Anne Marie too. I always like to watch other people's videos because you pick up little tricks. You know, because there's, there's, you know, we all have our little, our little gems in our back pocket. So I'm just moving everything over. So this time, because I've already got this flap on, I'm not moving it right to the edge. And I didn't, I, now watch, because I didn't dry fit this one, I bet it may not, it's going to be fine. It'll be fine. So again, if I had dry fit, fitted it, I would have done all this already. I'm just dragging it along, have the left hand, right hand side of it lifted a little bit. And I just wait for it to fall down. And that's what I want. Be fine. So on this one, I'm a little higher in this corner, but I know by the time I get my inside piece on, this piece with the arrow going the wrong way on it, I know that everything's going to be okay. So I'm going to show you what it is that I'm... So if you look at it here, this is just a hair, it's not flush, and it'll be okay. I know it'll be okay when I put on my spine reinforcement piece. So the next piece of paper we need, and we're just going to get rid of this arrow because the arrow is going the wrong direction, is I cut a piece of a, the spine reinforcement piece, as I always refer to this thing as, it's six and a half by six and seven eighths and the six and seven eighths is the from the top of the book to the bottom of the book no pardon me yeah the six and seven eighths sorry it's from the top of the book to the bottom of the book and i like to cut it at a, at the eighth just so i don't have anything hanging over and so when i lay down my pattern paper i'm not going to see any of this wing but this is what's going to form the shape of the book. It's what's going to hold it all together. Because I always do this and I go, right now it's very wobbly. And once we put our spine reinforcement piece in, or what I call the spine reinforcement piece, I always say it stiffens everything up. It makes sure that everything is going to um, hold together well. And I, again, like to use dry adhesive. It is my Again, adhesive of choice that I tend to gravitate to when I'm doing these things. And I have some rolls of adhesive that I've been using because, because you know, they're not going to stay sticky forever, probably, if they're not used. And I've never had a problem with my uh, dry adhesive um, giving out. Maybe I'm just lucky with the climate I live in. I don't know. And what I'm going to put this thing, I'm going to put, sorry for that big noise. I'm going to put one of these down the middle. So it doesn't have to be complete coverage, as long as you're close. Don't like to get it right too far to the edge because that's when I end up with, again, pieces that are hanging over in it. I don't like that. Hello, Heather. Nice to see you. Or hear you, I guess is the word. We're just burnishing that well. Bring the book back in. Again, we're going to just do a little quick dry fit. Yep, I'm going to be good with that. We're going to pull off the backing. And this is where I'm just going to walk around to the other side of my computer and pull out the paper that I want to use to make the second album. I have to bring this down a little closer to me so I can see the top. So what I want to do is I'm trying to hover it, as I call it, top to bottom, side to side. Something like there. And then I just lay it down. Yes, this is when I would love it if there was two of me. I could send my other self over to get what I need. So I'm going to use this bone folder. I think 
that's all I'm going to know. I'm going to want my other little teeny tiny guy that's in here. There. I'm, I'm kind of fussy about what bone folders I use to do this with. Again, it just gets down to, and I am going to burnish it because I can't remember if I did do this. I think I did. Just err on the side of caution. But I did. Because you don't want it buckling. And so be careful because you don't want to use this pointy tip of this particular um, mist you too. Um, you don't want to use this pointy tip because you could put that through your your um, cardstock. And I'm just slowly getting this reinforcement place, piece to adhere to the wing. Because that's what's going to make our book. I'm going to want this one. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I should have showed you what it was that was happening. I was just a little bit over. And I know that sometimes you just, that's why I had to use more than one bone folder because depending on, sometimes you need to work the crease a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now let's do this other side. Turn it around. Just what we're doing is your bone folder is just going down that crease between the front cover and the spine. You're making sure that everything's getting adhered. That's why I like using the dry adhesive because that's you get full coverage that way. I'm just going to turn it. And like I say, Check out your cardstock. Just don't go and say, well, because Bonnie did it, it'll, it'll work for me. Try it yourself because it doesn't always. Well, thank you, Jerry. Like I say, we're just going to make the cover, the hinge, and put the paste pa base pages on the hinge today. And then next week, we're going to do the, um, the balance of the page construction. And you don't need... You don't need for me to go through and decorate it because you can go through the walkthrough again. Maybe what I'll do next week is I'll just do another quick walkthrough so it's right at the beginning of one of the tutorials. So there is our cover. And we did that in a whopping 40 minutes. So we have the cover front and back. And I really like my edges because I love it when they're nice and crisp and I don't see any of my adhesive. That's always important to me. So I'm just gonna sneak around to the other side of my computer because I wanna pull out the paper that I'm going to be using on this one. So just let me go and get it. And I'll try to keep talking to you while I'm over here. Just need to get, I know it's here. Okay, so the paper I am going to use to recreate this project with is I Have Majestic Dreams. So that's a Country Craft Creations exclusive paper. And I have been saving this not knowing what I wanted to use this on. And on my drive home, I went, this is the book that you want to use this paper for. So I'm just going to do, because it's absolutely perfect. And again, as you're looking at the paper, don't look at the whole, look at the pieces. 
you know that is the most important thing you need to remember with this is don't look at the whole paper look at when i cut it down when i used this this much of it and i think what we're going to use is i think i'm going to come back here and there was a plain I'm going to use a piece of this for the spine. So again, if you if you don't watch my tutorials, you don't quite know what's going on here. I always cut a piece of cardstock or pattern paper to fit underneath my hinge. So that's why I had to go and find something. Hello, Miss Tanya. Nice that you could join us. I started a half an hour later today, Tanya. And it's it's kind of interesting that half an hour later, I'm seeing all kinds of people I don't normally see. So I always like to put a piece of pattern paper underneath my hinge. So I needed to go and get it so that we could do this. Now, the other thing I always do is my piece of pattern paper that's going to go here is the same width as my spine is because you get a little bit of gap from where the book folds. And so that's why I like to do side to side coverage. And there's a piece of purple on the uh, spine. So I know it's two and a half. I'm just gonna use my small cutter here. And cut. And then I'm just gonna swing the arm out because I know the book is seven inches tall. So I want this piece of cardstock to be six and seven eighths. That and we are going to dry fit this, and I'm going to ink the edges because, well, that's what I want to do. And of course, I'm going to go back to my trusty, dusty favorite ink of all times that I usually gravitate towards. Yes, we are zooming this evening, Miss Tanya. But I had I had some stuff I had to do, so I had to start a half an hour late. And if you're wondering what this is, this is just a makeup brush. Got them on Amazon. Forget how many came in the package, but I love using the brushes for my inking. There we go. All right, so let's do that. Let's get out the glue, add some glue to the back of this. It's a pattern paper. So this is Tammy's Majestic Dreams, or Dream. Look at the title of it again. It is in the store. Maybe what I'll do is when I get this finished, this particular album finished, I will. Um, do a walk through so you can see just how different your book will look when you use. I always do this because remember, you got that second or two when you use a different pattern paper, it almost creates a different book. And even how you decorate, because we don't all decorate the same way. And I love seeing what you guys do to one of my projects because it gives me ideas to, to use for another project. Okay, so there. Good varnish. So there is our, and thank you for being so patient while I went over and uh, collected this piece of cardstock or pattern paper. All right, so the next piece we've got to work with usually I have it pre-cut and everything, but today just was not going to be one of those days. So I need my instructions out here too, so we can score. Let's do one of these. I won't need that ink anymore, so let's put it someplace where it's not going to be in my way. So those of you that know me know that I work in a craft space that is about two inch, two feet by two feet deep, and I still can get this craft space just covered with stuff. You'd think that I would learn to keep everything picked up and tidied and 
and all those under other wonderful things, but I don't. I actually create I actually create some of the craziest messes. <laughs> all right, so let's move. No, let's leave this on here for a second. So our hinge piece, we are making five eighths gussets because as you know, I also like to have that little extra space. I'm not a half an inch gusset person. I tend to always do five eighths. So for this piece of paper, because we've got four hinges that we're making, it is going to be five and seven eighths by six and a half. And we are going to do some scoring on the five and seven eighths side. And I usually pre-score this, so I just go down the measurements, but I didn't get the time to do that today, so you get to score with me. So we're doing one half. We are doing one. Like I say, these measurements are all on the cutting guide. We are doing one and five eighths because this is a gusset. So there's your gusset, there's your hinge, there's your gusset. We are doing two and an eighth. So that's the tick mark just past the two. We are doing two and five eighths, which is the tick mark just past the one half. And we are doing three and a quarter for the five eighths. So on this next one, I'll show you another way to do this. So we're now back to the hinge. So we need three and three and three quarters. So we're half an inch. So half an inch is one, two, three, four. So you can cut count the ticks. So there's your three quarters. And you go to one, two, three, four. There's your half inch and you need another half inch. So one, two, three, four. So that is four and a quarter. And now we need another gusset. So a gusset is five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's four and seven eighths. And now you need to do your last half inch. So one, two, three, four, which would make that five and three eighths. So I'll just run through those quickly again. So one half, one, one and five eighths, two and an eighth two and five eighths, three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and seven eighths, and five and three eighths. And that's your scoring for your hinges. And now we'll get them made and we'll get them in our project. Now, I always tell people when we're doing hinges, I always like to fold back on the paper. So when I've got the signal, when I'm first starting, so there's my first score line for my first hinge. I am making the bigger part of the paper fold back onto the smaller part of the paper. And I give it a good burnish. Hello, Sean. You know, I'm, I'm very pleased with myself because I'm putting more names to faces from the retreat. Now, that is your first hinge. And then you just wanna stand it up. So we're gonna fold all our hinges, make all our hinges first, and then we're gonna adhere them together. So I need to go to my next set of one half inch spaces. So there's the gusset, which is five eighths, and there's a half an inch and a half an inch. And again, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm going to fold it back onto itself and I'm gonna burnish it. And then I, I make the paper work for me and then I just tap it down on my scoreboard and I got two hinges now. So we're gonna repeat it again. So there's one half inch, there's the second half inch. So I'm going to fold on this score line right here. And again, I'm gonna turn my paper and I'm folding it onto itself, burnishing it. And the other reason you want to burnish like this is so that you're not pushing out a score line and then having crooked hinges. So there's the three. And so I got two gussets. Now, this is the last hinge we're going to make. 
and we're in the same position again. I want to work with my biggest part of my paper folding over onto the smaller part because I could bend it back, but I find I have a better success of keeping my score lines nice and straight or my fold lines nice and straight when I fold it back on itself. And there is our hinge and I'm gonna stand it up. So there are our four hinges. And now we're gonna turn them over and we're going to put some glue in our valleys. Okay, so I'm just gonna start, just gonna start, I just wanna see something. Okay, we're just gonna take like hair. I'm gonna have to go to my big cutter, but I'm gonna show you on this cutter. I just wanna take just a hair off of the edge of these hinges on the outside edge so that when the hinge is folding in your book or turning in your book, it never catches on the paper, on the, on the book itself. So right, let me get the book in here and I'll try to explain it before I go and cut it. So right here, let's pretend this hinge is glued. Right now, there's a possibility because it's flush with the bottom of the, the hinge that it's going to catch as we turn the page, like the front end, the front page and the back page. And if we cut off like just a hair, we alleviate that problem and it helps with the whole mechanism laying nice and flat. So I'm just going to take it over to the big cutter. That's the easiest place to cut this because I just want to cut a hair off. So give me a second and then we'll be right back. I just had a bunch of stuff sitting on the cutter, which I shouldn't have had, but you know, that's the way life goes sometimes. So let's get this all. And it would be better to do this be or you kind of had made the hinge, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta work with what you've got. So just a hair. And I do mean just a hair. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talk talking about. Can you see that? Hard to see it on, on my hand. Can you see that? A hair. That's all you're cutting off. Just a hair. So hardly enough to really worry about, but it will make a difference because ever since I started cutting off these little hair, I find that I'm having better success with how my cover like this was even a little bit more because you're going to see that one quite nicely but it's still like it's less than a sixteenth of an inch but it's just enough to make the mechanism turn appropriately so let's re-burnish these score lines before we put the adhesive All right, so if you look here, now it's it's hard to see, but it's just just a hair less, so it's not going to catch. So I hope I've explained that, the logic of that. And I tend to put glue right along the edge, covering my whole valley. Some people say I use too much glue, but Got to use the amount of glue that you think is going to work for you. I like to burnish from the front. So there's one. Now let's do the second one. So again, getting generous with my glue. I used to use dry adhesive to do these. Now I use glue. Actually quite like it. I've had a very good success with glue. 
for hinges. And fold it back on itself and give it a good burnish. Because remember, it's going to be turning because the pages in the book turn. Now we want to find our next two half inch. It's right there. So remember, you're not putting glue, glue on the gusset yet. You're just putting the glue on one of the sides of the hinge, the half inch hinge that you created. Hold it back. So there's three. Let's do the last one. Give it a good burnish. See, I'm going to show you this one because you can really see what I'm talking about on this side. Okay. So when you look at this hinge standing up, you should be able to see, you can see it really well when I have it laying like this. So there is the score line of the gusset. And because I cut off just a sixteenth of an inch off the edge of the hinge, I don't have any overhang. And that's what you want to avoid. Because sometimes, like this one is, is closer. That was the thin, thinner one I did. You'd run the risk of this part of the hinge being over and so as you turn this last or the front or the last page, you can almost hear it catching on the cover. And that's what you don't want to hear. You want it to be a smooth mechanism because that's what helps get, make those pages lie flat. Oh, Tanya, I have to show you. I gave you a shout out for your idea because I used it. I, I did a die. I had a die in my collection and I used the die to give a nice clean finish to this project. Okay, so there's our hinges. Yes, thank you very much for that idea. It was a great idea. I appreciate that. So I always like to make sure that my hinge is square and it comes from a time when I made a hinge and it was crooked and I got it in the book. I had the pages on the hinge and I had to tear the whole thing out. It was awful. So I know my hinge is nice and straight and will fit. So we're going to dry fit this and I, because I'm going to have to make some markings and some tick marks because there's no real pattern that I can use. And remember, just take a pencil. I sort of want a quarter of an inch. Should have about a quarter to a three eighths of an inch. Let's say there. Check something else. I'm just putting a tick down here at the bottom. You won't see those tick marks. And of course, then you move it like I just did there, which is not what I wanted to do, but it happens. I'm just going to take my little ruler and I want to see where I stand here. So I want to have sort of the same distance. And I do. So that one does that. All right, so because I put some pencil ticks now, I'm gonna pick this whole mechanism up. I might lower it just a little bit when I get it in there. So now we're gonna put our adhesive on those five eighths of an inch gusset. And again, I like using the liquid glue because it gives me a little wiggle room where you, when you use the dry adhesive, you don't get that wiggle room. And the last one. Okay. 
Okay. And I'm pretty generous with the glue. Thank you, Zella. I think the same thing. That cover to me is probably, that's my number one cover right now. I've made some other covers, that decorated some other covers that I've loved. But right now that, that's got to be, yeah. It's, it's, it turned out amazing. So I'm just lining things up. I am going to take my, because that's what I have to do. I'm going to do this. This looks good. Yeah. Let's furnish this down. I always use my finger first to do that burnishing. And then I bring in my burnishing tool. So what I'm doing now is I'm sort of making sure that I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing. I'm folding my hinges, getting them used to the idea that you are going to be hinges now. You were the chosen to be hinges. All right, so now we have the hinges in our book and now we're going to move on to the actual construction of the base pages. Clear up a few things here. I don't need that pokey tool right now. So I'm going to move the book out of the way. So our base pages, you need four of them, and they measure six and a half by ten and a half. Whoops, that was the brush hitting the floor, which is okay. That's why I moved it. So on our base pages, on the 10 and a half inch side, we are going to score at five and a quarter. So I need to score. Hello, Judy. All of uh, these pages. So on the 10 and a half inch side, I'm scoring at five and a quarter. One, two, three, five and a quarter, and the last one, four. And we don't need our scoring tool anymore, so I'm just going to stick it up there, get my cover back out from my scoreboard. Don't need that pencil anymore. And let's burnish these score lines. We're going to burnish them all at the same time. So there's one. I don't think we're going to need him. We might need him. We'll keep him out. And two. And three. Last one. And four. It's not a big album, but it's an album with a lot of real estate in it. So remember, I did do a walkthrough, but I kind of went through what you needed to create the project first, and then I went to the walkthrough. So you'd have to fast forward if you don't know what I created. So when we lay down our base page, so we're laying it down with the six and a half inch side butting up against the first hinge or the first gusset on the hinge. and I just want to line it up with the actual hinge mechanism. And then what I always do is I always fold my hinge over, lay my page down. And what I'm really more concerned about is how neat am I out here? Am I nice and square out here? Or do I need to adjust something to square my first page? So that's another little trick that I've used many times. Now I know there's a debate. Do you put the adhesive on the hinge? Do you put the adhesive on the, the um, base page? 
I tend to put my adhesive on my hinge, but I try to keep it to the top half of the hinge because I know that because I'm using glue, there's a chance that some of it's going to leak out and I don't want to have a hot mess on the other side. So let's burnish. Because remember now we've got one side of the hinge down. I just want to flip it up, make sure, because that's what you want. You want a nice folding, nothing's catching, base page. Now, this is where you get to decide, do you want to leave the top of your pocket open or do you want to close it? If you want to close it, just run a bead of glue at the top and the bottom. I tend to always leave them open because, I don't know, maybe there's going to be more pictures that I'm going to want to put into what I've created. So I'm also going to do what I often do, is bring out this white piece of paper that's something on it. I'm not sure what that is. There we go. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue on the bottom. And again, I'm going to keep my glue to the top half of the hinge, give or take. Run it to the edge though. And then I fold it over on itself. Like so. Voila, page one in our book. And I always start at the back. I always start with the last page of the book first. And I'll show you why here in a second. So there's that. Because now what I use to make sure that each of my next pages that I put in my album are going to be straight is I use the page before. And so I am more concerned about it being square at this side of the book than I am over here at the hinge. You're never going to see, if you're an eighth of an inch up from your the base of your hinge, you're never going to see that once it's decorated. I promise, I am an OCD person. And if I can say that, so again, we try to keep the adhesive. You can run a straight line. About, keep it on the top half of the hinge. say I have more than one burnishing tool and I typically I do use them all so we're running a bead of glue along the bottom of the base page and again I'm running glue around along the top half to three quarters of the hinge and then I'm folding it over Two more hinges and then we're going to call this for today because it's 3.10 my time. Remember, I'm on Pacific time. So for those of you that are always trying to figure out what time it is, uh, when I say I'm going to be on at 1 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time or Pacific Standard Time, depending on where you are, that should help today to tell you how far ahead of me you are or behind me you are if you're watching it live. So again, just glue on the top one half to two thirds of the hinge. And lay it down on itself. Or lay it down on the base page. And bead of glue, my paper back in. And you go, why don't you use a white piece of paper? It's easier for me to see the edge 
And it also lets me keep my mess to a minimum. So the top two thirds of that hinge. And fold it over. And I want to straighten something here. There we go. There we go. Oh, I moved it. So as I was burnishing it, I noticed it moved. And that's the other good thing about using the liquid glue is it gives you time to fix something like that. So there is page three, last face page going in our album. Hello. Hello, Patty. Thank you. So glad you could join us. Remember, it stays recorded. And ho hello, Anna. So I'm just making sure I'm nice and square. And then we're going to add our adhesive to the top one half to three quarters of the hinge. I hope that's not going to catch because I heard it. Now it's going to be fine. Don't know what I heard. And my paper. So next week, we'll do the flips and the flaps. And I'll do another quick walkthrough of the actual project. And then I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm off. I'm, I'm away again because we are having... Uh, our second retreat for Country Craft Creations of 2023, and this retreat is in uh, Orlando, Florida. So I am leaving to start my journey to get me to Florida. All right, so there are the base pages in our project. We just flip them. And I love this method because they're such, they, they lie flat and that's what's the most important. Uh, you know what, RJ? What I have left, give me one second here. What I have left is, just have to find it. There we go. So you're asking me what I have left of this of this collection, this Minte collection. I have some a few larger and some six by six. You know, a handful of six by six, and a whole bunch of little pieces. And then this is what I've got left of the twelve by twelve. And I would strongly recommend you get both the six by six and the 12 by 12, because you want those smaller patterns for some of the places in the, in the album. So this is all I got left. Got a half a sheet, half a sheet, half and half, and only one full, no, it's not even a full sheet. I thought I had a full sheet. I think I've got one more. Yes, I got a full sheet plus this, this three quarters of a sheet. But you really want to get both the 6x6 and the 12x12 12 12 because you need that for just the different sizes. Because it's not a huge album. It's only measuring 55 by 7 So that's that's why I'm recommending you, rec going to recommend to you that you get both. But you could always do it with one and with one 12x12 12 12 and then just supplement with the solid colors. So there is the, the, the album base. This is what you guys are going to recreate. 
with it. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed our time together today. I know I certainly have. So I will see you next Friday. I, I'm not certain of the time right now. I'm going to say 1 or 1.30. Just check Scrapbook or sort of on Thursday next week, and I will post the time that I'm going to be going live. And we will finish all the flips and the flaps in this album we created. Remember, this is technically goes under the belly band and then closes and closes. And this is what we're going to create with the flips and the flaps. So, thanks again for joining me, and I will see you next week. Have a great rest of your day and have an awesome long weekend for everybody that's getting one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.